And so for 10 nights, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be looking out to his creation. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that what he sees from us is pleasing to him. Allahumma ameen. So five things, dear brothers and sisters, I want you to carry with you inshallah ta'ala and to set your mind to from now as we get into these last 10 nights. Number one, as we go into the last 10 nights and as we hope that we catch Laylatul Qadr, remembering that the night starts at Maghrib. Remembering that the night does not start at Isha, but the night starts at Maghrib. And some of the Salaf, they mentioned that this is such an important point for us as we go into these precious nights, because how many people at the time of their breaking of the fast will lose out their Laylatul Qadr before they pray a single rak'ah of Taraweeh, before they even make it to Salat al-Isha. Why? Because over iftar, you might backbite, you might gossip, you might say something you should not be saying, you might do something that is not pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Ibn Qudama rahimahullah ta'ala said, and most of the people lose it in its early part of the night. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Most of the people lose it in the early part of its night. It could be one comment that's made at the dinner table, one comment on your way, one joke that is told that should not be told in those nights, and of course should not be told at any part of the night. But it starts at Salatul Maghrib, and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تَتَجَافَ جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجِعِ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا That they forsake their beds, seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reward, fighting with their sides. Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah said, this actually refers to the companions praying between Maghrib and Isha. And so remember to include everything from the Adhan of Maghrib all the way to the Adhan of Fajr as part of your Laylatul Qadr. The second thing, dear brothers and sisters, to make sure that we catch Isha and Fajr all 10 of those nights and days within Jama'ah. And if that jama'ah cannot be in a masjid for those that are not able to, then that jama'ah is formed in some other way, but to pray it in congregation. And we know that because the Prophet ﷺ said that whoever prays Salatul Isha in congregation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will write down for them the first half of the night in prayer. And whoever prays Salatul Fajr in congregation, in jama'ah, Allah will write down for them the second half of the night in prayer. And so to put that in context, just very logically, to pray three hours in the night, but to miss Fajr, for example, or to miss your Isha would not be more pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pray them in jama'ah. Sa'id ibn Musayyib radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal, man shahid al-isha min laylat al-qadr faqad akhadha bihaddihi minha. How merciful is Allah. He said, whoever prays Salatul Isha in congregation has taken their portion from Laylatul Qadr. So keeping that, and if it is your regular habit and you're unable to do so, then Allah will have written it down for you anyway. But have the intention inshallah ta'ala for every night and day that you can to catch Isha and to catch Fajr in Jama'ah. And if you're unable to at that time, or if you sleep through one of them and it overcomes you and you pray at home, do not grieve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala writes down in accordance with the intention. So that's the second thing, not to miss Isha or Fajr in Jama'ah in those nights. Nights. The third thing, what the Prophet ﷺ said authentically, that whoever prays Qiyam with the Imam until he finishes, Allah will write down for him the entire night in prayer. Now the ulama differ as to what the quantity of that is. Does that mean, for example, that if the Imam comes at 3 o'clock a.m. or at 2 o'clock a.m. and prays for an hour, let's say from 3 to 3.45, and you pray with that single jama'ah, that single group of people, that single imam for that entire time. That, that counts as the entire night in prayer. Does that mean if you pray the first eight or if you pray a, you know, a group of rak'at with one imam that that counts? And bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, we take the opinion inshallah ta'ala that yes, to pray with an imam when there is an established prayer, from the beginning of their Qiyam until the end of their Qiyam counts as the entire night of prayer. So try to be you know, very careful to catch it. And if you can catch both of the prayers, then do so. But to at least pray one block of the night, bidnillahi ta'ala, behind an Imam throughout their entire portion of what they are to read that night. And if you can catch Witr with them, then do so bidnillahi ta'ala. That is the third thing. Now I'll get to the ones that get a little bit more interesting and that require a little bit more thought bidnillahi ta'ala. 
We started off this month by talking about what the best athqar, what the best forms of remembrance in Ramadan are. What is the best dua in Laylatul Qadr? We all know the answer to that. But I want to I want to build on that just a little bit, inshallah ta'ala. This number four means keeping yourself busy in dua and particularly the short duas. I'm going to mention the reason why. Most people in here, if not everyone, already memorizes Allahumma inna ka afuun tu hibbul afwa fa'fu anni. Oh Allah, you are the pardoner, you love to pardon, so pardon me. Most of us memorize that dua, we have been taught it at a very young age. Alhamdulillah, when Aisha radiallahu anha asked the Prophet sallallahu what dua should I make? The Prophet sallallahu did not give her a page dua that we would all be fumbling to try to find it and try to repeat it and get through the Arabic of it. No, anyone can memorize this dua and anyone can learn its meaning very quickly. That in and of itself is a mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, the ulama say, build on that concept of the short comprehensive du'as as you move around on Laylatul Qadr, even subhanAllah, even they said if you're on your way to relieve yourself and come back, keep the short du'as on your tongue. Why? Because the Messenger SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam said, أَحَبُّ الدُّعَاءِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَجْمَعُهَا the most beloved of du'as to Allah, the most beloved of supplications to Allah are the ones that are the most comprehensive. What do you say in tawaf between al-Rukn al-Yamani and al-Hajr al-Aswad, the last round of tawaf? You just keep repeating what? رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ As you're moving around, whatever you're doing, as you're trying to think of what you want to do next, as you're in, immersed in your du'as, sandwiched in between your personal du'as. Use the short comprehensive du'as you memorize from the sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam, and let them engage you throughout the entire night. The short athkar, the short forms of remembrance, and the short comprehensive du'as from the Messenger Wasallam. Finally, dear brothers and sisters, number five. This is the most comprehensive way to understand Laylatul Qadr and it's very important. The narration about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam إِذَا دَخَلَ الْعَشْرُ شَدَّ مِئْزَرَهُ وَأَحْيَا لَيْلَهُ وَأَيْقَضَ أَهْلَهُ Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam That when the last 10 nights would come in, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would tighten up his waist belt and he would give life to the night. He would enliven the night. The whole night was alive. What a beautiful expression. The night of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was alive and he would wake up his family. He would make sure that his family also was participating in it. Rasulullah when he said, do not turn your homes into graveyards. Assign a share of your salah to your homes. Don't turn them into graves. Why? Because dhikr gives life to the heart and it gives life to any space that we are in. And so every single Muslim is included in this category that you have something to give life to every portion of the night. And within that, you diversify your good deeds. And an easy way to remember this, dear brothers and sisters, is that all of the good deeds that are preferred in Ramadan are even more preferred in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. And, and make sure there's a portion of each one of them in the last 10 nights.